he would have been considered a long shot. But that long shot came in. I'll put my bet on him again. Well, let's take a look at what happened here at Richmond one year ago when Austin Beers scored his first Wheel and Modified Tour victory. Today, it is Richmond Speedway. This is a race that everyone circles on their calendar. We are green and racing at Richmond, modified style. It has been all Austin Beers out in front. Cecily in trouble, up the racetrack and off the groove. Doug Kobe, 1.8 second advantage over Ronnie Silk. Horton out of shape, he had to chase the car up the racetrack. Austin Beers takes back position number one. He is away with the lead and the win if he doesn't blow up. Checkered flag is waving and Austin Beers is a winner. It means everything to me. I'll never forget my first win. This is a tough division and uh, I'm so proud of it. Well, he did it, and in an amazing style and fashion. And like he said, he will never forget that impressive victory, his very first. And to win at this speedway is a major accomplishment. But today, if you look at the starting lineup, there are several other individuals, Joe, that have their sights set on the trophy, the money, and the prestige, and to further their efforts in 2024 for the Wheel and Modified Tour title. Well, the driver we have our eye on is the driver who won the Mayhew Tools poll earlier today. Ronnie Silk will lead the field around to the green flag as 13th career poll, and he comes off of a tremendous amount of momentum, not only winning the championship a year ago, but being victorious in the first race of the season in Florida at New Smyrna Speedway. Let's take a look back at the season opener at New Smyrna. The NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour from New Smyrna Speedway. Tonight, it's opening night for Modified Racing. Greg Lutz from the pole position looking to lead the challenge for second. Justin Bonsignor in a white 51 this year, trying to take over the race lead. But Lutz powers up the outside lane of the racetrack. Lutz's car might be losing some of its magic. Ronnie Silk across the line. It's not over with yet. Austin Beers knew he had to be more aggressive. Right to the bottom. Silk out in front, trying to go back to back with wins in New Smyrna. Ronnie Silk has done it. He will take down the win. Can't start much better than that. A team effort. It takes everyone to do this and can't be happier to be here in victory lane. Champion, he is definitely going to be a big factor. Five wins as we go back in 2023. And there's a young race fan who's all pumped up and ready for this one, and rightfully so. Well, we've met two of the stars going in, the point leader, and we've met last year's winner. Well, you see everybody in the fans here are excited. The driver's stage and ready to go. We're coming up on the green flag and pre-race ceremonies. In just a few minutes, we'll have more from Richmond Raceway and the Wheel and Modify Tour right after this.
Back at the Richmond Raceway for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Just a handful of moments away from pre-race ceremonies and the teams are gridded and ready to go racing for the second time in the 2024 season. And it's a beautiful night for modified racing here. Fans are here, checkered flags and all. We'll see who's going to capture that checkered flag at the end of 150 laps. There's no question about it. And of course, we've got to take a look at some of the cup drivers that are in this starting field. Competitors like Bobby Labonte will be starting back in the 12th position. But it'll be Ryan Newman who will be starting 18th on the grid in the Curb Records Casella Waste Systems car. Gary Putnam owns the automobile. Different car for him today. They had a good run in practice. They expected to qualify much further up in the field than they did. But there's an old saying, Joe, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. Yeah, 18th place starting position for Ryan Newman. He won a Cup Series race here in the fall of 2003, an 18-time Cup Series winner. And you look back at the last time Ryan Newman has won on the Wheel and Modified Tour, it came back in 2011, and he was driving this Putnam number 77. And so this team reunites to have an opportunity to put Ryan Newman back in the Wheel and Modified Tour and see if they can lay down a good run tonight. Certainly do. And you have to remember that this race team, Gary Putnam, did not run in a race a week ago in effort to prepare this car for this evening's presentation. This team is pumped up and they're ready to do just that. So you go from one of the most experienced drivers in the field in the form of Ryan Newman to a driver who tonight will be making his second career wheel and modified tour start. He drives car number 56 and he's one of three brothers that are in the field here tonight. A driver by the name of Trevor Catalano. Uh, Catalano came home, made his debut at New Smyrna Speedway and came home inside the top five. He qualified ninth here tonight as we get a look at that 56 car. He's off to a very strong start as a rookie. He certainly is. This kid is just a little bit overdue for success. Joe, we've seen him run up front so many times. He has not been able to close the deal. No fault of his own. He's had his share of problems, but at 18 years of age, he's got a brilliant future ahead of him. And as you said, the Catalano family, they showed up in New Smyrna with not one, not two, not three, seven race cars to compete in. If you want to be a good racer, you got to get good seat time. And this young man is doing just that. He's impressed early on. Now his brother, Tommy Catalano, the oldest of the three Catalano brothers, he has had good days here at Richmond Raceway. He drives a number 54 car. You go back to this race two years ago. He led 69 laps in what he thought was going to be his first career wheel and modified tour victory, but 11 laps shy of the finish, Justin Bond Monsignor was able to balance and maintain those tires a little bit better and take over that race win. But the, the Catalano family in general, they're good at these high-speed racetracks. We talk about tracks like New Hampshire. We talk about tracks like Richmond and even some of the larger tracks like Oswego and Lancaster where they can get speed. They're really good at those racetracks, and it suits them well. It certainly does. They have no fear of speed. Way back in 2018, he was the Rookie of the Year on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. So we're expecting some big things out of him and his brother as well as they shared some success as we said in the opening action of 2024 so 26 year old tommy catalano is the story as the driver of this car that you're looking at but then you've got trevor catalano and i think this young man is already proving that he is going to be a factor as well tommy catalano certainly going to start back uh, well in this pack he'll start back in the 20th position. A moment ago, we mentioned Justin Bonsignor on the number 51 machine. He'll start on the front row alongside Ronnie Silk, but I tell you, I think when you look at that championship battle of what you had here at the end and really halfway through the 2023 campaign with both Ron Silk and Justin Bonsignor going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, I think Justin Bonsignor is getting a little bit tired of finishing behind Ronnie Silk. I think he lost right. to him at New Smyrna, and he lost the pole to him here today. He'll start second. He certainly will, and there you can see Justin leaning on the back end of the race car talking to one of the crew members. Now, Ryan Stone has prepared that car, like always, to perfection. Ken Massa, the Coastal Fibers machine, three-time champion, and imagine that, 40 wins and counting. Think about that, Joe. 40 wins and counting. Some of the competitors in the field, they are just looking to get their first win. But there are very few that can say they have won as many as Justin Bonsignor.
Yeah, he's one of the drivers that is certainly going to go down to the history books as an all-time great. That three championships, all those victories as noted on screen, Justin Bonsignor, certainly history in the making as far as the Wheel Modified Tour goes. Well, fans, we're ready to go racing here. We're a moment away from pre-race ceremonies. We'll step aside and come back with more from Richmond Raceway in a moment. Richmond Raceway, the host of tonight's Wheel and Modified Tour event. As we get ready to go racing here tonight, open wheel style with the ground pounders in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. You know, you look at Ronnie Silk on the pole position, you go over the past couple of years, the race winner has started on the pole the last two years running. Certainly has, and that is something that has been very rare. But in these last two seasons, it's been put to the test. Will today be deja vu and a repeat, or will it be something completely different? The stage is set, the pit crews are ready. Let's go trackside. Please rise as you're able and remove your hats and veterans render a hand salute as the Gates County High School Navy Junior ROTC Color Guard presents our nation's colors. Here to offer tonight's invocation, please welcome Regional Vice President of Operations for NASCAR's Mid-Atlantic Regions, Matt Brannick. Would you pray with me? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this wonderful day that you've given us for racing here in Richmond. But on this Easter celebration weekend, Lord, we're so very thankful. And we fall before you with humble gratitude and recognition of your promise of eternal life for those that would believe in the death, resurrection, and atonement of sins as offered through the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. We thank you even more for the daily provisions of grace, love, and mercy that you provide to us all. Help us be ever mindful. Lord, we ask that you would be with our drivers, our teams, our officials, our staff, and our fans, not only during tonight's race, Lord, but throughout the remainder of the weekend. Also ask that you'd put a special hand of protection over our military and our first responders as they stand ready to protect and serve both here and abroad. Lord, we're so very grateful for all you do for us. We await the coming of our King Jesus, and we pray all of this in his name. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome charting Nashville recording artist Celeste Kellogg. Oh, say what can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we 
At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Let's hear it for Celeste's performance of our national anthem. Well, the drivers of the NASCAR Wheel and Modify Tour ready to get after it here. 150 laps in the Virginia is her racing lovers. 150 from Richmond Raceway. We'll have the command of fire engines when we come back. Virginia for Racing Lovers 150, the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Tonight, it's for Modified Lovers as we get ready to go racing in the second stop on the tour. Perfect blue skies in the air. The driver is getting strapped in and settled to go racing here at Richmond Raceway. Really the second largest track that they will race at next to New Hampshire Motor Speedway all season long. It certainly is. And remember, a year ago, we had to wait a whole other day for this. And the event was run on Easter Sunday. It was kind of a different format and everything else. But today... The sky is bright. The competitors are ready. You saw the thumbs up. You saw the high fives at the conclusion of the pre-race festivities drown track side as well. Very unique racetrack that we're witnessing. There's a look at uh, what the fans will be looking at as well as the enthusiasm and the excitement on the racetrack itself. And of course, old glory, America's red, white, and blue towering over all of this on a night for modifieds from Richmond. There's a tremendous amount of history here at this racetrack as we take a look at the track facts and track statistics here. This is a three quarter mile racetrack. It's a D-shaped oval. You see the back straight away, 860 feet. But look at the banking here in the turns at Richmond. It's completely different. If you come off turn number four, the banking is 14 degrees. The 60-foot wide turn number one has a 10-foot apron on it. That makes it unique all by itself. Seating capacity, 51,000, Joe. And, of course, tonight's event, the safer barriers. Remember, they were added back in 2003. That makes it safer for all the competitors. And at these speeds, we're going to see some incredible competition, modified style. Qualifying time around here, 21.159 seconds set by Ronnie Silk earlier today, had the fast time. And you look at this racetrack, one of the reasons why this becomes a track that they highlight on the calendar is it's one of a handful of tracks that the NASCAR Cup Series races on. And you look at New Hampshire Motor Speedway here at Richmond Raceway, now the North Wilkesboro Speedway at Martinsville Speedway really become marquee events for modified racing. They sure do. And now you look down through the starting lineup, 23 of the 26 cars assembled at the racetrack were in the 21 second bracket that's how close this entire field is a good look at the banking and the turns you know it's a delusion when you look at it on the camera like this but when you go out and walk on it it's a completely different field there's another great look at coming off the turns we talk about this racetrack momentum and speed speed going in and then mash that gas and get right back on it we've seen and heard from many of the competitors about that factor. One of the things we'll talk a lot about tonight is this is a very abrasive racetrack as far as tire wear is concerned, so you have to be able to make sure that you conserve your equipment, take care of your tires, and make sure that you've got something to go the entire 150 laps here tonight. It's going to be a great night at Richmond Raceway. Beautiful evening as we'll race into the sunset here tonight. The drivers all strapped in, ready to go racing. They've been caged up for just under two months, and they are ready to see the green flag fly. Let's go trackside for the command.
This is the moment you have all been waiting for. Are you ready to get the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour? Virginia is for Racing Lovers 150 started. Here to give the command of Fire Engines is the Executive Director of the Virginia American Revolution 250 Commission, Cheryl Wilson. Drivers, start your engines! Well, Joe, there's nothing like it. The sound of the mighty men and women of the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. They fire the engines. The long pause as we went from event number one at New Smyrna is underway. It's time to put these warriors on the racetrack. This is going to be a battle to the fittest. In the old days, they said the stadiums were the ground for the excitement, and only one survivor could have bragging rights to be the best. Today, we're not sure who that's going to be now, but I guarantee it's going to be a fight every lap and every turn. A lot on the line here tonight. This is a relatively short season. You look at second race of 17 races and among a variety of different racetracks. They run here at the Richmond Raceway where it takes high speed, white knuckle driving, but you've got to be smooth. We saw those pictures earlier yes, of how did. the racetrack looks. Turn two is going to be a spot where you've got to be very, very good and set yourself up for an opportunity to save that right rear tire and not lose the balance of your race car. Sure do. There's a look at the Ryan Newman race car, the Gary Putnam curbs records machine as he's got it fired back. And he's got a ways to go, as we pointed out, back in the 18th starting position. Gary Putnam, a youngster that came from Connecticut, actually came from my hometown in Vernon, dreamed of aspiring to be an engineer and work in auto racing. He has done just that. And there is another one of the cars that we are seeing going into this event. A lot of history surrounds that car as well. Bobby Labonte, he's a 2000 NASCAR Cup Series champion, a Hall of Famer in NASCAR, and he's in the field here today. You look at the age spread today. We've got the oh, driver as young as 16 years old, the young Carson Lofton, and as old as? As we have a 63-year-old driver, which is Tim Conley. Now, if you look at Tim Conley, I should have been so lucky at 63 to look like that man. Well, he he's, was a football player. He was, and he's an outstanding <laughs> athlete. And uh, he is going to be good in the tribute car, we'll call it, to Bob Garbarino, the old Mystic Missile combination. And if you go back into the record books, you'll discover he was a nine-time winner. And that's pretty impressive in those days. The competition was just as impressive as it is today. Joe, I want to also go to Bobby Santos with that number 14 car as well for a second. He'll be starting up on the outside of that second row. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for today's Virginia is for Racing Lovers 150 here at the Richmond Raceway. Ronnie Silk earned his 13th career pole earlier today. He'll line up alongside Justin Bontz the 2022 winner of the event. Last year's winner, Austin Beer, starts third, and Bobby Santos, who won the championship back in 2010, will in, start fourth. In the fifth starting spot, it'll be the Propane Plus, Lynn's Propane, number three. The standout from Seacock Speedway from Rehoboth, Massachusetts, Jake Johnson. This gentleman comes back behind the wheel of the 46. Three out of four wins he had with this team. The Riverhead Building Supply, number 46 for Clegg Lutz. You go back to the 56 car, Trevor Catalano finished fifth at New Smyrna. Then you go back to uh, Kyle Bonsignor. He was a Langley winner. He'll start 10th today. And then you go back to Bobby Labonte starting in the 12th position uh, in the Pesomatic machine. And it's Eric Goodale starting 14th on the grid. We move further back in the field. Tim Conley in the 17th spot with car number four. Ryan Newman will start 18th in the 77 car here today. Go a little bit further back, Andy Sice, Tommy Catalano rounding out the top 20. You go back to the other half of the field. Here you go. You've got Andrew Krause, who was quickest in the 21st position. He will start car number 24. He's fastest in the first practice. Marcello Rufrano in the 17 car makes his debut in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour today. Sure does. Brian Roby, the New Hampshire State Champion, starts in 23rd. Ken Heggie is 24th. Final row, Gary McDonald and Melissa Fifield. Let's take a look at uh, the race analysis for tonight's event as the field rolls across the start-finish line here at the Richmond Raceway, still in packs of two. Uh, this particular race is going to be 150 laps. Beautiful night. 66 degrees and sunny. No percent of rain. Much different than a year ago. 
ago. They've got to come down pit road for fuel. That has to happen sometime after lap 40, but they've got tires they can change on pit road. They sure can, and the tire allotment is going to be six a six-change tires situation. Pit strategy, three pit stops. Who will make those pit stops count, and where will they come in this event? You talked about it, the importance of not burning up that right rear tire. And let's take a look at some of the keys of the race, and it leads off with just that. Keys of the race here tonight at Richmond Raceway, it's all about saving your tires. A very abrasive racetrack. You've got to have something for the end. And then pit stop adjustments. With those three stops that we'll have here today for fuel and tires, you have to chase a very rapidly changing racetrack as the sun sets and the lights turn on, the track will change. You've got to be on top of that. You sure do. And finally, perhaps maybe the most important one, stay disciplined. Don't over race your race car. Let the racetrack come to you and ride it out and race when it's time to race. Patience is a virtue. We've got some young drivers, as we said before, hot driver already this season. There is no question it is Carson Lofton. Had a birthday yesterday, moved from 15 years of age to 16. He'll be starting in the 23 car in the mid-pack of cars. Marcello Rafano driving the Davini Racing Enterprises, Wheeler's Auto Machine. He's a graduate from Stafford's SK. Here they come, Joe. We're looking for the start. The Virginia is for lovers. Modified 150 is green and racing from Richmond. Ronnie Silk from the pole position. Sails off into turn one on the bottom lane of the racetrack, and he'll bring Austin Beers right along with him as they race off the back straightaway for the first time here in the Richmond Raceway event for the Wheel and Modified Tour. Moving quickly into that third spot, it is Jake Johnson. Inside lane was the advantage of the first five cars. They thundered down into turn number one. Four cars have pulled away. Then it's a side-by-side -side battle, Joe. It is the number seven New York. That is Doug Kobe. He's contending for the fifth spot. But out in front, nose to tail, it is still Silk the leader. Austin Beers, a little bit loose that time. Here's the side-by-side -side battle we were talking about. Craig Lutz working down to the inside lane in the number 46 as he tries to pick up a spot. Up front, though, Justin Bonsignor started on the front row. Now he is side-by-side, -side, headed down the back straightaway underneath the 64 of Austin Beers. Beers was a driver who picked up his first career victory here a year ago. He was fastest in practice won the pole and then he won the race and that launched a two-win season for the young driver it certainly did now keep your eyes on jake johnson in the bowler number three car the lens propane machine he is trying to follow the 51 of bonsignor to the front of the pass remember now the number three machine might be considered a surprise to some but the history of the bowler family and now look at doug kobe the baldwin number seven car has moved into the back bumper of the number three car as they head off the turn. This time it appears that Austin Beers is literally hung out to dry in the outside lane. Doug Kobe, that seven New York car looking very good here in the early stages. He was able to reel in those top four competitors after the initial start. Just a week ago, Luke Baldwin picked up a victory. Tommy Baldwin's son, the car owner, and the king of the modified race at South Boston. A huge event that he was able to capture. And boy, what a big moment for the Baldwin family. He was driving for Hermie Sadler and Bill Stanley, the team that uh, Bobby Labonte drives for today. But that was a big story for the Baldwins over the past week. It certainly was. Now keep your eyes on the 46 machine of Craig Lutz, the Riverhead building supply car. He is working the back bumper of the number 23 car of Carlson Lofton. Remember, the Goodies Racing number 46, this driver, Lutz, returned to this car. He had three wins for this race team before. He's looking to be back in winning form. He was great at New Smyrna. Will he be good here today? Carlson Lofton, think about it, the youngest driver in the field, car number 23, looking racy meanwhile right behind him literally joe a conga line of some of the hottest drivers on the modified tour to date you look at carson lofton in the 23 that's that 16 year old craig lutz in the 46 whatever that combination is with craig lutz and goody motorsports it just works the magic and the crew chief doug ojako they're a combination that have put fast race cars together we certainly expect him to be good as the race goes on started in the sixth position he's fallen back a little bit since the start of the green flag and he is now trying to make up for that lost ground here is 
Trevor Catalano. We highlighted him earlier in the day. He came home fifth in his debut race in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. That was two months ago at the New Smyrna Speedway. Now qualified ninth, and he's working down to the inside, trying to pick up the eighth spot underneath the Craig Lutz 46. While he's doing that, directly behind him is the LFR house car. Patrick Emmeling, a driver who competes on the trucks in the Fleet Works of California car. This car, they expected big things out in the first event, fell a little bit short, but today it all could change. Directly behind the number one car is a good battle between Kyle Bonsignor, Bobby Labonte, and Tommy Catalano running in their pack of cars there. Here's a battle for the race lead. Justin Bonsignor goes out in front here, 11 laps into tonight's event. Bonsignor to the point for the first time. We talked about in the open how, you know, all season long, it was a 51 of Justin Bonsignor and the 16 of Ronnie Silk who are battling first, second, the whole nine uh, throughout the entire season. Ron Silk goes out and wins the race at New Smyrna, and it really, I think, put everybody else back on their heels saying, you know, we worked all winter long to try to see if we could find an answer for Ronnie Silk, and at New Smyrna, nobody could, but they've had about two months to prepare for today's race. They certainly have, and Phil Moran knows how to, oh, trouble now! Darting out of line, he tags the wall. It is car number 64, Austin Beers. Right front wheel is peeled back on the race car. We kind of caught the very end of that, Joe, in the situation there as Austin Beers was running at that particular point in the event, challenging among the top three cars. And there you see the highs and lows of the sport a year ago. He was the guy that dominated the racing action. And now, already early in this competition, you can see the right front wheel sheared back on that car as well. Another casualty, the Propane Plus number three car, Jake Johnson, who was running third at the time. He has a flat right front on that car, and that possibly is where the contact might have began. We'll take a look at it if we can get a replay of that situation there. But what a heartbreaker for Austin Beers. Austin is part of a three-generation family of racing. His grandfather competed at the old Dorney Park Speedway, his dad, Eric Beers, and here's a look at it. Darting to the inside was the three car. It looked like there might have been, what do you think, Joe? Well, by the way, the 64 car took up the racetrack and the right front tire that's down yep. on the three car of Jake Johnson. It was certainly some contact there. We're going to look at it now coming down the back straightaway. Watch Johnson dart to the inside. And boy, you know, that is hard to tell whether or not there was contact or not on that angle. It certainly is. There's the spring off the right front wheel of the 64 car. You know, as they're going into that turn, momentum will determine where you set the car up. And, and as he tried to hold his line and stay down, it appears that Jake Johnson was right there on the inside. So that car sets with a flat right front. You can see the dejected Austin Beers heading back uh, to uh, his crew, Ronnie Uhouse and company. Murph, here's another look at it. Down the back straightaway. Here comes the number three car darts to the inside while the 64 is trying to run. The old saying is for the same airspace and Jake Johnson and Austin Beers come together and the guy who got the worst of the wear last year's winner of this event. It's a pretty late entry it looked like for uh, Jake Johnson really drove deep down at the bottom of turn three and uh, the two apparently coming together as a 64 of Austin Beers went hard into the outside wall. We saw Austin climb out of that race car. That's a very hard hit. You see the right front damage on the Jake Johnson machine. You'd have to think that they certainly came together uh, when they came down into turn three. But when we saw that angle on the inside of the racetrack, very tough. it's tough to tell where they actually yes. made contact because Johnson was now, pretty well alongside of them before uh, the 64 car of Austin Beers took off the racetrack. Now take a close look at that. We just missed it for a second, but the rub rail or the right side nerf bar on the number three car was not damaged at all. What that simply means, the contact was made between the two cars with the right front tire and rim, Joe. See that rub rail? It's almost perfectly straight. It isn't collapsed. It isn't damaged whatsoever. So we hit basically on the rim. It collapsed the tire. 
and the two came together and the end results is not good for two of the young superstars in uh, racing and modified racing today. Jake Johnson, a standout at the Seacock Speedway where he competed there in pro stock and late model competition. Dad raced at Thompson, truly one of the nicest families there is. This kid's got a ton of talent. A great story about him, Joe. He had a matchbox car of the bowler number three in his bedroom as a youngster growing up at six, seven, eight years of age. And he said, Dad, someday I want to drive that race car. That's how dreams come true. Joe, you've got kids. You can relate to that as well. Yeah, and there's a little kid in all of us, there especially is. when it comes uh, to going racing. So Jake Johnson, uh, trouble at New Smyrna. He ended up uh, with a penalty that cost him a lot of time and really was ne never able to recover from that. This is a tough start for them running full time this year. There's the Austin Beers, uh, number 64, heavy right front damage after that incident up there in turns three and four. The other situation that I noticed as a car was coming down on pit road on the hook. It looks like the radiator is punctured. The front horns of the car, they are actually bolt-ons in front of the radiator itself, but there was fluid coming out. Ronnie Uhouse and company and that well-diverse crew is got their work cut out for them. Sly Zabin, who's been creating a lot of magic. Sly is the shock builder for a lot of these teams in the competition here. Joe, as we look down and uh, take a look back at the top 10, Kyle Bonsignor has moved into the 10th position. Craig Lutz being shown unofficially in ninth. Patrick Ebeling in eighth. Trevor Catalano is up to seventh. Uh, Carson Lofton in sixth. Bobby Santos is fifth. Fourth is Doug Colby. And then Jake Johnson was running third, is going to drop back. So that's going to move everybody up. And, of course, Justin Bonsignor and Ronnie Silk. You know, you have to wonder, Joe, as you work uh, and find the magic on pit road that these different teams even though they're rivals they work together on the combination well they do a lot of these modifieds are, are pretty similar and it's a matter of trying to make those adjustments to be able to get the maximum performance out of your race car on race day field stopped on the back straightaway under the red flag here after the first incident of the event involving austin beers and jake johnson we'll step aside and come back with more action in the virginia is for racing lovers 150 for the nascar wheel and modified tour We're under the red flag at Richmond Raceway. The Virginia's for Racing Lovers 150 for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Just 13 laps into today's event. The red flag out for an incident between the 64 of Austin Beers and the three car of Jake Johnson. Austin Beers into the outside wall in turn three. His night is done. And under the red flag, Jake Johnson sitting on the back straightaway, still in the top five 
but right front damage that'll force him to come down pit road. Absolutely will. And for those of you that are watching on flow, you might wonder why the number three car is still setting on the racetrack, why it hasn't come down on pit road. The call is simply under a red flag situation, the car has to stay as the red flag came out. When the caution comes out, he'll head back down on pit road. We just saw a minute ago the uh, number 64 car, and it didn't look like there was a lot of work going on there. And that's a tough situation, as we said, for that team who are looking for big things. Sounds like they're about ready, or if not already, have been firing them back up. Watch the number three car quickly head back down to pit road. That 64 car of Austin Beers, that team has been very, very cohesive. I think they were very optimistic coming into here. I know I agree. coming out of New Smyrna, they didn't get the result that they wanted to have. They, they thought that they were going to be able to compete for the win. Uh, they never really showed that strength, but they knew coming into Richmond, certainly with the success that they had last year, uh, that they would be a contender. And, prove that in qualifying running third but just 13 laps in I mean that's the way this sport goes one day you're on the top of the heap the next thing you're at the lowest part of the valley and that's going to be the case for Austin Beers and that entire 64 team they are now going to have quite a hole to dig themselves out of as the season rolls on sure are you know let's go back to a year ago at New Smyrna when that team was running up front of the competition they had a problem on pit road a mechanical problem that forced them out now as you look to the right of your screen you see the number three car the propane plus the lens machine heading down for that right front wheel and we talked about it there is not a lot of damage done to the right side of that race car but what the story is going to be here joe is this is using up one tire early in the event you can see the crew getting over the wall right front they're changing they're not making any other adjustments so apparently the uh, jake johnson crew like what they have with that race car and the car goes down off the jack and heading back out so jake johnson making his way back off of pit road and you look at uh, that right front tire that he'll get put on they didn't make a lot of work and adjustments on the tire itself or on the suspension and so we'll see if that had any impact with the contact that was made now we talked a little bit earlier about the three pit stop race so there are six tires that teams can take on pit road and they also need to take at least fuel past lap 40 sometimes 40s, so yes. we won't really see any of the drivers that are running inside the top 10 or so come down pit road track position very important here you might see some of the drivers at the back of the pack having 13 laps under the green flag to be able to adjust their race car you see them uh, coming down pit road now to make some adjustments but from a strategy standpoint most of the leaders will stay out and try to get to that fuel window before they come down pit road for adjustment you see a literally a gaggle of cars there's the newman curb records number 77 down on pit road they're making a wedge adjustment a little tire pressure change to the right rear and now uh, the same type of a change is being made looks like oh maybe two turns on the right rear of the number 77 car you look at what they were doing there right so they're taking air out of the right rear tire that tells me that his car was really really loose out on the racetrack that basically you look at it this way if you took a cup that you might got at your local convenience store one side the bottom is really narrow and, and the, the top, top that you big. drink out of is really big and if you roll that on a table it makes a turn and that's really what the tires are they're small on the left side they're big on the right side and that adjustment is what is really critical in modified racing and if you miss that that can be the difference from winning and finishing 20. it certainly can be and as simple as that a minor little adjustment like that will make all the difference in the world let's recap the field for those of you watching on flow justin bonsignor one of two leaders ronnie soak was the early leader he's setting in second doug colby up to third bobby santos is fourth carlson Carson Lofton in the fifth spot. Trevor Catalano is sixth. Patrick Emmerling is seventh. Craig Lutz is eighth. Kyle Bonsignor is ninth. And Eric Goodale is up to ten. We'll keep an eye on the rest of the field here as the race goes on. Continue to be impressed by the young 16-year-old Carson Lofton running in the fifth spot in car number 23. Has done a nice job here tonight. Started inside the top ten with the eighth place starting position has picked up a couple of spots. Now, some of that has to do with the uh, Austin Beers and Jake Johnson incident, but he has shown 
poise here in just a handful of starts on the Wheel and Modify Tour. He certainly has, and we can see we have the top three rookies so far. Carson Lofton is in the fifth spot, Trevor Catalano is sixth, and then we go back to 12th for Marcello Rafano. This is Marcello Rafano's maiden voyage on a super speedway. He runs at Stafford, where he is an outstanding competitor in the SK Modifieds, a former champion in the support divisions as well, driving for Mike and Michelle Davini. First time out for him, Chris, the crew chief, they're expecting big things. He said, I didn't get any seat time at all in practice here today. Getting ready to get back under the green flag here. Justin Bonsignor is the race leader. He will restart on the bottom. Ron Silk, who won the pole position and led the first 11 laps, will start to the outside. Doug Kobe, who looked strong in that first segment, will be third. Keep an eye on him in that bottom lane, as that has proven to be a strong start. A little bit deeper in the pack. One car is out of shape. Melissa Fifield slow to the bottom on the restart. They stacked up behind her. Everybody pointed in the right direction. We stay under the green flag. Carson Lofton has moved down underneath Ronnie Silk red car to the right of your scene back up front here comes doug colby he puts the bolt with number seven new york to the front of the class lead change number three in the competition here good racing among the top five meanwhile carson lawton is right there carson tries to reel him in in the fourth position inside lane we've got a car pulling out of line to the bottom in the top 10 cars. Up front, Justin Bonsignor hot in the tire tracks of Doug Kobe. They go one, two, a little bit of distance behind them to third, Ron Silk, but Justin Bonsignor is not content to ride in the second spot. He'll drive right to the bottom of the turn and take over the race lead one more time as they charge down the back stretch. It appears that Patrick Emberling has worked his way up to the top six with car number one, the LFR house car. Just a few laps ago, he was at the bottom of the top 10. Here comes Ronnie Silk, moves to the inside. He'll make the move, and Silk now will move into the third position, making way as they continue to run. Now he works his way around Doug Kobe. Kobe falling back now, giving up two positions to move back to third. That car having a hard time keeping it on the bottom of the racetrack. You see him exiting a little bit higher off turn four. That allows Patrick Emmerling to close in, having a good solid run here early going. There's a 23 of Carson Lofton that we've been talking about, second generation driver. His dad, well known for modified competition here throughout the South, and Carson will generally run the races at Richmond Raceway, North Wilkesboro, Martinsville. We'll see him a lot on the Wheel of Modified Tour this uh, this season. It certainly is. There's a great look at him as he dives to the bottom of the racetrack. He has a completely different line, it appears, than the cars directly in front of him. He's got to settle in, and he is doing just that. Out in the front pack of cars, another great move by Patrick Emmerling, car number one. Now, Joe, we remember in the old days, Patrick Emmerling had his first major breakthrough on a super speedway. You were there to cover that. Yeah, he's been really good at these racetracks, and the Cup Series racetracks in particular, wins at Bristol, wins at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. You look at the strength that uh, Patrick Emmerling has had over the years. He'll be pulling double duty this weekend. He's got his NASCAR Xfinity Series car in the garage area. A guy that's trying to pull double duty in the win column, Ron Silk, he goes back to the point. Great action at the front, just 25 laps in. We've already seen a handful of lap uh, chain, lead changes. We've seen three different leaders, and Ron Silk, Justin Bonsignor, and Doug Kobe, all three champions of this series. Certainly are, and you saw a great move by the 16 of Silk when he took back the lead. Bonsignor is being patient. These two drivers have the true definition of patience. They know how to run hard, but they know how to run when the money is on the table. Silk is your leader. Meanwhile, Patrick Emmerling has moved into the third position with car number one. Emberling is reeling in. You look at the times, the difference between those competitors is .443. Joe, Patrick Emberling is coming. Yeah, he certainly is. You know, you look at a racetrack like Richmond Raceway where you've got to take care of those tires. You can run quick laps here, but you can do it using and abusing your equipment, sliding the car sideways, braking hard, getting into the corner. Ron Silk, Justin Bonsignor, they are some of the best at conserving equipment for the long run. Ease into the turn, ease back into the gas, especially here off turn two. You don't want to pitch the car sideways, so you burn up that right rear tire. And they know how to run fast laps 
while keeping the tires, the brakes, and the car under them. And that's going to be one of the things that they're going to have to do as this race goes on, especially when you look in the rearview mirror and you see somebody like Patrick Emerling closing in quickly. He knows that that pressure is coming, but you have to stay disciplined as the race goes on. If you look at the situation, Patrick Emerling started back in the 11th position. He did not get the qualifying run that he wanted. He has passed more cars on the racetrack than anybody currently. He has worked his way up among the top three positions. Kobe has settled back into the fourth spot, and Trevor Catalano is moved into the top five, Joe. That's no surprise to us. A little while ago, we saw the three car of Jake Johnson. He came down pit road. He got that right front tire, and Johnson has moved up inside the top 12 as he has rallied from the back of the pack. A little bit deeper in the pack, Anthony Cecily in the number 19 machine. There's Craig Lutz. Craig Lutz has not been able to really move much forward from where he started. He's ninth, just getting passed by Anthony Cecily. But how about that 17 car, the Extreme Motorsports machine? That is Marcello Refrano out of North Haven, Connecticut. His debut in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, doing a great job driving this car well into the top 10. He certainly is. We call him the pride of Italy. His family goes back and forth to Italy all summer long. They own wheel automotive in Connecticut and he's looking really good at this particular point back up front Bonsignor still leading the event the margin between first and second point one zero six I don't think we've seen the last of this two battle for the lead or swapping for positions either here Joe no I think we're going to see a lot of this as the race goes on uh, Bonsignor and Ronnie Silk uh, remember as we got to the end of last season neither of them would even talk to each other the teams wouldn't talk to each other and being that they're the one and two teams on the circuit they had a park right next to each other all weekend long it's been uh, quite the battle over the years with them and there's more to come for sure here's Bobby Labonte in the number 38 machine he's got several wins in the NASCAR Cup Series but none have come here at the Richmond Raceway and he looked strong last year at this race he was making moves and moving forward in the late going he's already moving forward with the Hermes Sadler Bill Stanley owned number 38 that car looking very sporty here in the early stages as he has just been able to move into the 12th position around Craig Lutz. Craig Lutz is starting to drop back a little bit Tyler Rapim is up to the 14th spot Jake Johnson you might wonder after that front tire going down he is just out of the top 10 in the 11th position there he is to the inside of Marcello Rafano. Jake Johnson is a man possessed he moves to the bottom side of the Extreme Motorsports car. The Lynn's propane machine has now broken in to the top 10. That car looks really, really good. Jake Johnson has a couple of pole positions already to his career in the Wheel of Modified Tour. He's had some days where he's been very, very strong. But this right now, recovering from that challenge in the right front tire that has gone down to drive inside the top 10 before they come and get their pit stops, uh, we're only you know, 113 laps to go. So much racing left to go for Jake Johnson. And he continues to march forward and continues to put cars behind him. Very impressive drive for him. Certainly is. Directly behind him is that number 14 machine. That is Bobby Santos. It's not your imagination. Usually he's running the Tineo number 44 car, but not today. Now, he competed with this car before here at Richmond, and he had a very good run with it. I think you're finding Santos, who's a very cautious driver, pacing himself at this particular time. There's the 14 car. Running directly, Melissa Fifield, the 01 to the right of your screen. Your screen. Here comes Labonte again, Joe. He's trying to make the move around Marcello Rafano, who runs in the tire tracks of Santos coming off the turn. And yeah, Marcello Rafano in that neon number 17, he has lost the handle on that race car. You can see him really fighting it, especially up off turn number four. That car just does not want to stay underneath him, and I think that's why he started driving forward for a little bit. There you see it sliding up yeah, off the turn. Exactly. He can't keep the car underneath him, and he's starting to slide backwards. You were talking about Bobby Santos in that 14 car. Very impressive drive for him at the Oswego Speedway just one year ago. Joe Stearns, who owns this modified, he came home third that day, has a second opportunity to run in this 14 car here today. And Billy Putney, who is well known in modified racing yes, in Western New York and beyond, is the, dri is the gentleman who's the crew chief on this race car. So it's a group of modified drivers and team that have been very successful in their own right over the time. Running part time on the series tour, they have put together very solid runs every time with a different driver. Every race they've showed up 
five consecutive races and continue to find race cars that have a lot of speed. You in know, them. and that is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. Different drivers have a different feel for equipment. They like things a certain way. There is Carson Lofton and Anthony Cecily in a battle. We just saw a quick moment of that. Back to the front of the field, it's now Patrick Emberling. On the back bumper, this is the LFR house car. Robbie Fuller and his staff put this thing together for Patrick Emmerling. They expected big things out of it in Florida during speed weeks. It didn't happen. But they said when they came to Richmond, they were going to give it its all. We just saw the number 16 of Silk's car. A little bit of a twitch off the turns. Joe, that gave Patrick Emmerling the runner-up spot. Emmerling isn't done yet. Car number one is looking for position number one. Patrick Everling, he's got Dale Hedquist as a crew chief on that race car. Dale Hedquist was a crew chief who led John McKennedy to the championship back in the 2022 season. And Dale has been working with the LFR team for a while in that one car and being able to make this Troyer car work out of the camp and trying to uh, align with uh, Robbie, who does the, all the work on these race cars. And that has been quick every single time they have come out on the racetrack. And Patrick Emmerling is a very talented driver, so the combination working now. The battle is for the eighth and ninth position. Jake Johnson has worked his way back up to eighth. Now he has passed more cars than anyone else in the field. Behind him is Carson Lofton in the ninth spot. Marcello Rafano is still being shown at the bottom of the top ten. Even though that car is loose, he's still holding on. Labonte is working him over. There is Carson, celebrated a birthday yesterday, turning 16 years of age. First two smart races of the season. He dominated the racing action, was looking for the hat trip. Well, he said he didn't even understand what a hat trick was. But by the time they left, it was a Baldwin that was into the winner's circle for the $20,000 to win race at Sobo. Carson Lofton was a champion in modified competition at the Caraway Speedway, picked up a win there recently in modified competition, so momentum on his side. We saw the 17 car, Marcello Rafano was starting to backpedal a little bit. He seemed to get the car back under him now, and Carson Lofton, who was quick early, now starting to fade. He was as high as running in the top five. Now Bobby Labonte is going to go underneath him, and that's going to knock him outside the top ten. Carson has got to get that car to the bottom. It just doesn't want to stick on the inside. Here comes Labonte. Carson is well aware of the fact that he's alongside. They head down into turn number one. It appears that Labonte has the position now. He gets the bite coming off the turn. And those two have spent a lot of time racing against each other here in the southeast. And they certainly know the style of each other. Bobby Labonte quickly making work of Carson Lofton. And Lofton just trying to hang on to that race car, hoping he gets a caution before he falls too far back. This battle that we're watching right now between Carson Lofton and Bobby Labonte is some nine and a half seconds behind the race leader, Justin Bonsignor, as they chase down the back straightaway. You know, Bobby Labonte, it's been so great to see him come back and run in modified competition, including here in the Wheel of Modified Tour to have a NASCAR Cup Series champion and a NASCAR Hall of Famer in the field and showing interest in modified competition certainly is significant. A guy like Ryan Newman, who's driving that 77 car tonight, he's always been into modified racing, even while he was an active Cup Series driver. And that adjustment that they made on that most recent stop, he's been able to move up now 